Welcome to Baltimore County Public Schools Mesa Awards Program. I'm Eric Cromwell, Coordinator of Elementary Science. With me is Don Dunphy, who facilitates our Mesa program. If you are not familiar with Mesa, it stands for Math, Engineering, Science, and Achievement. The program originated in 1970 at Oakland Technical High School in California and has grown exponentially over the last 50 years. The program came to Maryland in 1977 and is celebrating 45 years this year. Today's award program will celebrate the accomplishments of over 100 students comprising 18 teams in nine schools from all areas of the county. There are five challenges teams could take one this year. We will describe these challenges later in the show. An additional challenge was the continued uncertainty that the pandemic brought to us this year. As a result, we had to make a decision early in the year to conduct a virtual event. We greatly appreciate each school's flexibility and look forward to hosting a live event next year. To open our program, I would like to introduce Dwight Carr, who manages Maryland's MESA program through Johns Hopkins University's Applied Physics Laboratory in Laurel, Maryland. Hi, welcome to the Baltimore County MESA Day. My name is Dwight Carr, and I am the STEM program manager for the Johns Hopkins Applied Physics Laboratory, which means I also serve as the executive director for the Maryland Math Engineering Science Achievement Program, also known as Maryland MESA. So today, I have the honor of being able to share a few, a few of uh, stories with you um, and some important milestones. So I'm going to start off by sharing a funny story that I had when I was a kid and I was participating in competitions. And then I'll also share with you a video that shares some important milestones for the Maryland Mesa program. This year, we celebrated our 45th year anniversary. So you have a cool video to, to, to highlight some important things that's happened over that 45 years. I'll wrap up by sharing some additional programs that we offer at the Johns Hopkins Applied Physics Laboratory for kids just like you. So let's get started. So here's something I call my funny competition story, the science fair. In the spring of 1984, I was a fifth grader at Tacoma Elementary in Washington, DC. That year, my plan was to win the science fair with an amazing replica of our solar system. My main competition was a girl named Dion Fancy Pants. Now, don't be fooled by the innocent eyes and pretty smile. Dion was a science fair assassin. She had won the science fair two years in a row, and I couldn't stand it because it was obvious that her parents were heavily involved in her projects. Don't believe me? One year, she built a model of a working television. Yes, a television. Her mom worked at the school, and Dion was a know-it-all, which made her winning even more irritating. I spent three months planning for the fair. My mom was a ceramicist, so she encouraged me to make the model out of ceramics. Ceramics starts as a liquid clay that hardens when it is exposed to air and then becomes rock hard after being heated for several hours at high temperatures. My idea was to use styrofoam balls, gears, a bicycle chain, a light fixture, well, you get the picture. I expected it to turn out like this. But instead, it turned out something like this. You see, since I was a fifth grader and had a very limited budget, my mom and dad had the final say. Now, after driving to several craft stores, we couldn't find styrofoam balls, so we ended up taking the ceramics approach. Unfortunately, my mom didn't have spheres that were different sizes. She only had ceramic eggs that looked like this. Not only were they all the same size, they weren't perfect spheres. I was freaking out because there was no way to make planets like Jupiter and Saturn. But more importantly, how was I going to beat Dion Fancy Pants? Well, after trimming nine clay eggs, heating them and painting them, the model wasn't perfect, but I was proud that I did the best I could as a fifth grader. Dion Fancy Pants beat me again that year, but I felt good about my project because my parents only helped me with the things I was too young to do for myself. 
like operating a 1000 degree furnace. I did earn honorable mention and my science teacher, Mr. Kimbrough, used my model to demonstrate the solar system for the rest of that school year. So overall, I didn't feel like it was a complete waste. Now, the moral of the story is that this competition does not define you or your potential as a future scientist or engineer. I've only won one science competition in my life, and that was as a college student. Despite this, I graduated with honors for my biology degree, earned a master's degree in electrical and computer engineering, and have worked to solve some of the hardest problems we face as human beings. So win, lose, or draw today, have fun regardless of your personal beyond fancy pants. Good luck today. So thank you for indulging me and in listening to my story. Next, I'd like to share our 45th anniversary video with you. Wow, we've had some amazing milestones during that time. So the next thing I'll share with you is the APL STEM pathway. Now, this is a pathway that you're already on. It starts with the Maryland Mesa program and has a bunch of different off ramps and on ramps for you. Um, the next stop along your journey could well be the STEM Academy, which is an after school program that you can do in person or virtually for middle, and it's designed for middle schoolers and high schoolers, where you can take a deeper dive into STEM subjects and things that you're already learning, like programming, circuit design, and design thinking. The next step on that pathway is community outreach. We offer opportunities for you to participate in programs like Girl Power, which is an expo that we offer during Women's History Month. And finally, we offer a high school internship program for students in the 11th and 12th grade. So you can do that also in person or virtually. And our hope is that we put you on a path to become a, a, becoming a STEM pro professional. But first we need to make sure you get there, you are able to choose a STEM major and succeed in that major. So everything that we're doing is to prepare you to make sure you're both college and career ready. So thank you so much for being such a, uh, for being part of Mesa's storied history. And we hope that uh, the future you're developing yourse yourselves becomes a future that we also are able to enjoy at APL and also at other STEM organizations. Thank you for your time. And again, good luck today. Inspiring students to take on the challenge of a career in STEM is one of the MESA program's central goals. Our keynote address today 
comes from Wayne Nicolette, who works in a STEM field you may not have considered. Mr. Nicolette's love for STEM started when he was a child and is carried through to adulthood. Welcome, Mr. Nicolette. Well, hello there. Good afternoon. My name is Wayne Nicolette, and I would like to thank you for inviting me to speak at your Mesa Awards Banquet today. I'm 59 years old, and I've owned my own business exhibits for 30 years. That's X-I-B-I-T-Z. My company designs and fabricates custom trade show exhibits, museum displays, interactive exhibits, props and sets for the movie industry, and themed environments for professional buildings like airports and shopping centers. I honestly rely on my STEM skills for everything I do every day. How did I get started? Well, at a very young age, I enjoyed playing with Tinker Toys, Legos, model trains, and slot cars. The model train making passion of mine led me to a job at a local hobby shop when I was in high school, and that helped further my STEM skills by learning and understanding scale model making to a more professional level. I also designed a passion for motorsports racing, but more on that subject later. After I graduated from high school, I went to a mechanical drafting and design school. Back then, drawing on a computer just didn't exist yet. And while I was there, I was approached by a company to assist them with building a model train display of Baltimore City for a local mall for their Christmas displays and their Santa Claus photo op. So I decided to accept the challenge and I took the lead on building the model train display. And when we installed it in the mall, I was amazed at how much the people appreciated this display. So I decided to go into business on my own, building model train displays for shopping malls at Christmas time. Sounded like a simple project. So I went to a trade show display company to get a booth to advertise my business in New York City at a trade show. And the company that I was trying to buy a booth from was so impressed with what I was doing, they hired me on the spot to help them with their display company. I didn't know much about the display industry at the time, and I found that it made good use of all my STEM skills. I, looked, I took the job, and I was there for about six years, and then I went on my own, and I opened up my own display company exhibits, X-I-B-I-T-Z. For the past 30 years, we've been entertaining our customers with interactive exhibits, award-winning custom trade show displays, and all during this time, I also got into motorsports racing as an owner and driver of formula cars, kind of like Indy cars. I continue to hone my STEM skills every day by competing with many of the drivers in the same equipment, constantly pushing the limit of the race car and the driver. That's me. I am very grateful and thankful for all those who have helped me to blend my passion with my business and jobs. I say to all of you, find out what excites you in life and don't be afraid to push the boundaries and take that next step toward your goals. Discover your passion. The bulk of my success has been based on my accomplishments and failures. Without my failures, I wouldn't be where I am today. I'd like to congratulate all of you for your success in this program and hopefully some of the things you learn here will help you throughout your life's journey. Cheers to all of you and congratulations. We want to thank Mr. Nicolette for his time and inspiring our students to consider a wider view of what STEM can be. I would like to now recognize this year's participating students and coaches who made it all possible with this year's highlight film. Hopefully this short video will help you appreciate the challenges these teams and coaches had to overcome. Three, two, one.
Let's give all of our schools a big round of applause for the innovative work they were able to complete this year. So now, the moment we have all been waiting for is now here. Let's get on with our awards. We will start with our elementary awards. Our first award is for the Elementary Storybook Theme Park. The objective of this challenge is to expose students to the engineering process through the design and construction of a functioning model theme park ride. The ride is based on a storybook of the team's choosing. The ride must be designed to carry four passengers, which consist of marbles, ping pong balls, and a golf ball through two consecutive test runs. For this year's elementary storybook theme park ride, our winner is Chadwick Elementary. Our next award is the Elementary Wearable Technology Challenge. In this challenge, the teams will design, build, and demonstrate a wearable device to monitor the respiration rate in an infant. In other words, the device will show how many breaths a baby takes in one minute. Students use a very realistic doll as a test subject. This is a very real world problem in areas of the world where medical care for infants is inadequate or non-existent. This year's winner for wearable technology is Chadwick Elementary. Now for the Expanding Structure Challenge. Students were challenged to design and build a structure that could fit into a small space and then expand into a larger space, a problem emblematic of those faced by NASA when launching satellites and space stations. The main goal is to build the most efficient structure possible. Final design should be as light as possible and support as much weight as possible. The structure will be made of components that fit entirely inside a transport container of a specific size. The structure will have the capability to be assembled to span a greater distance than a transport container in under four minutes. Finally, they must demonstrate the strength of the deployed structure. This year's winner for expanding structure is Chadwick Elementary. Next, both elementary and middle school teams had the opportunity to participate in a non-competitive challenge where they created computer programs 
using Scratch. They designed their own interactive applications, which involved problem-solving skills, higher-level mathematics, and computational thinking. The theme of, those applications, of these applications had to be center on teaching the public about a health problem of their choosing. Participating schools were Chadwick Elementary, Catonsville Middle, and Deer Park Middle School. Each participating student is recognized for their efforts. Next are the awards for the Expanding Structure Challenge at the middle school level. The structure students build must hold weight across a wider span than elementary students. For this year's Middle School Expanding Structure Challenge, honorable mention goes to Deer Park Middle School. Our winner is Catonsville Middle School. Moving on to high school, all these challenges are identical to the challenges at the middle school level, starting with the wearable technology challenge. Second place goes to Milford Mill Academy. This year's winner is Eastern Technical High School. This year's Expanding Structure Challenge is the most competitive with four high school teams competing. Honorable mentions go to Carver Center for the Performing Arts and Eastern Technical High School. Second place goes to Milford Mill Academy and our first place winner is Randallstown High School. Our last category of awards is for the National Engineering Design Challenge. This challenge is designed at the national level and is among the most difficult to implement for students. If teams win at the state level, they can go on to earn a national title. This year's NADC is entitled Designing for Equity in Your Community. For this project, student teams will identify an individual or group who experiences some type of inequity. Teams will employ human-centered design practices to engineer a solution. Teams must use a coding component as the main element of their design. Teams must use a community-centered issue as their project. Examples of designing for equity in your community can be, but are not limited to, projects that address a physical or learning disability, food scarcity, access to health care, access to clean water or other resources, access to employment or education, or a social inequity. As you can see, these are all real-world problems that students were challenged to solve. For the middle school division, first place goes to Deer Park Middle School. And for the high school division, first place goes to Eastern Technical High School. For all of our first place teams, their work is not quite over. They will now be moving on to represent Baltimore County at a virtual state competition in May. From there, we hope to have Baltimore County teams represent Maryland at the national competition. Thank you all for participating in this year's MESA program. We hope to see you face to face next year.